In today's video, I make an epic upgrade to the Fluval Evo 13.5 filtration. Previously, I had a media basket and I did not like it. It has its own set of problems. And in its place, I made a roller mat, the first all-in-one fish tank roller mat that fits in the back chamber. So watch this video to see the creation and to witness this thing in action. And if you stay to the end, I'll let you know where you can get your hands on one of these roller mats for your Fluval Evo 13.5. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna get asked to make a similar roller mat for a ton of other different tank styles. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment on what tank I should make a roller mat for next. So stay tuned. Welcome back to IC Live. My name is Mark. If you happen to watch my last video, you saw me make this media basket for the Fluval Evo 13.5, and it worked. It got the job done, but not well enough. So I decided to make something better and ultimately designed the first all in one roller mat that goes in the rear overflow chamber. Now, this project sounds simple enough, although there's a whole ton of different ways I could tackle this. So to kick this one off, I started with a drawing. I didn't record it, but I've got a ton of different drawings that we're gonna go over right now. All right, looking back into the sketchbook, I got like four or five pages of drawings here. So it looks like I'm just trying to make kind of a structure. I don't exactly remember what I was going through here. I just know that I wanted to draw out as many designs as possible so that I could kind of weed some out. I was doing some profiles as well. And uh, one of the things I was trying to figure out is how to make it print friendly in the fewest amount of parts as possible. And ultimately, how are the rollers gonna sit in the roller mat so that they can easily be changed out? Here is the 3D design of the Fluval. And in the back right now, you can see the media baskets from the previous video. So let's go ahead and shut those off. And here is my first attempt at the roller mat design. I did not actually get to the point of creating this one, mainly because it had several flaws. First off, it was not gonna be all that easy to print in just a few parts. And then second, with the rollers facing forward like they are, I had to weave the filter paper through, down and around, just so the water could overflow onto them properly. So to weave it was not gonna be the easiest thing. And the guides, um, they were also not gonna be all that easy to get set up fully. So it's a little too complicated for my liking. I decided ultimately to go with a simpler design. So let's go ahead and shut this bad boy off and this is my simple design here. Now, like the last one, I did not actually get to producing this one because I recognize some flaws in it as well. So then I moved on to this design. Now this was gonna be the adjustable design. I did actually get to the point of printing this bad boy, which you will see soon. It consists of just two parts. They come together and then they have the guides that fit in afterwards. It was adjustable to not only the size of the chamber, but also the width of the chamber as the plastic could kind of be stretched out. The major flaw with this design was once I got it printed, it was way too flimsy. This was not gonna last very long, especially being in a reef tank for you know, five years, 10 years, however long you however long you want this equipment to last, it just wasn't gonna make it. So I went back to the drawing board and ultimately finalized this design right here, which I'm gonna show just for a split second because before I got here, I made other variations that didn't quite work out. But they helped me to figure out what was going wrong and make adjustments accordingly. Now what I landed on was a basket and guide design. So ultimately there would be a basket that would hold the roller mat and then one segment would have the roller mat and the guides. It took me a few different variations of this design before I landed on this one, and how I figured that out was starting with a whole bunch of test prints. So here they are. This print ended up failing, but it gave me enough to go ahead and test the fit. So right here, I just drop it right in the back chamber and it fits okay, but it also made me realize that I do not want the basket to sit on the outside of the glass like this. So it was a successful test print in telling me what I don't wanna make. 
So I moved on to a slightly different basket design, which is printing right now. After this basket finished up, I managed to print both sides of the guide overnight. With everything finished up, I took a closer look and I noticed that although this looked great at first, it actually has a layer shift and it's two layer shifts and for some reason it goes one direction and then back to the original direction, but it's only off by fractions of a millimeter. Or so not a big deal, just a little annoying on such a long print. I have no idea why it happened. I was also able to, after the brackets, get all the rods printed. So these are the rods that are gonna sit inside of each one of these holes. Unfortunately, I did not set the offset correctly, so I actually have to sand each one of these to make sure it sits properly in the hole. Total rookie mistake. I would reprint, but it would take too long, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sand these and make sure they fit properly. With everything sanded and fitting, I'm gonna go ahead and test fit this outer cap here, this other side of the guide. Get it lined up, press it into place. Uh, it doesn't snap exactly like I'd like it to, mainly because I had to sand everything. Uh, but ultimately, I'm gonna get this bad boy glued together. With everything taken back apart, I just used some CA glue to go ahead and put all these rods in place. Over the rods, I slide the rollers. I just have to be super careful that I do not let the rollers get glued to the rods because they're supposed to slide. So ultimately you can roll that mat just like it's known as a roller mat. Everything is glued up. So I set a book on top and then come back a few hours later and here's what it looks like. So here's some of my other test print failures that I had. And uh, ultimately, this entire design right here is going to be a failure because, once again, I didn't mess with the correct offset. See, pressing the basket out does not fit properly. I'm off by fractions of a millimeter, probably, I don't know, a millimeter or two. Uh, but ultimately, as I go to press it, when it sits inside the tank, it causes the basket to widen, so it is unusable. After printing this test print, I had to then make the adjustments and ultimately that's when you see this design here that is the final design that ends up working and working fabulously. So now I'm going to go ahead and start the prints here and get this bad boy all assembled. And here is the basket all finished up. This print turned out fantastic. Um, definitely going to be usable. In the meantime, I was also able to print each sides of the guide. I'm going to call it the guide carriage, so I actually have a term for it now. As I go to put these together, I notice I made another mistake. I did not set the offsets right for these acrylic rods that I was going to glue. I have to go ahead and figure out a way to fill those gaps. But luckily, I don't think it's going to be too hard because I'm just going to use absurd amounts of this ABS slurry that I made here in purple. So. When I go ahead and glue these bad boys in, I'm just going to put a ton on there. I think it will have no problem filling these gaps. So I grab the rod and I just dip it right here in this ABS slurry. I uh, put a lot on there, so like I said, I don't think this will have any problem filling the gaps. And once hardened, it will be solid. Now, I have ABS plastic and then I'm using acrylic rods and luckily acetone works great and ABS combines great with both. So this is going to be one solid piece when it's all finished. This thing is all glued up, but now it needs some time to dry because the uh, ABS has to harden and ultimately purge out that acetone vapor. So it looks pretty good, although it's ugly, but this first test model does not need to be pretty. It just needs to function. Hopefully this buildup of ABS right here does not prevent the rollers going over the top of the rods to slide. While this was finishing up, I managed to go ahead and print the tubes that the roller fleece mat is going to go onto. 
then I went back out to go ahead and flip this design. It should be hardened up enough, but I have to go ahead and put on the other side. And this is gonna be the tricky side because when I put on the ABS, I have to make sure that I slide the rollers over the rods and I do not allow the rollers to go ahead and get sealed to the rods with the ABS slurry. Here's the tubes that the roller fleece mat's gonna go onto. As I mentioned, they just press right together in the middle. Oop, that one was a little too tight. I gotta get better with these offsets. All right, I get the purple one together. I was just curious to see how this would fit, and what do you know, fits really good. The zigs are gonna be cool. Everything is all dried up, so I start taking it all apart, and uh, it's gonna take a little bit of time to go ahead and clean this off, and also get off the excess ABS and make sure that those rollers slide over the rods. Here is the finished model. Ultimately, the printing and assembly is most of the way done. And if you can see, the rollers still roll. They'll function. They're actually not the right size either. Um, I just didn't want to have to reprint. I used them from the previous model uh, before making some adjustments. Here's the tubes that the fleece is going to glue to. As I mentioned, they connect in the middle. I think I've said that like three times already. Uh, they slide into these little guides. So ultimately, they have this little guide that they just kind of slide into. Now, I do think I'm going to have to make some improvements to this. This was just the first iteration to see if this worked. And this time, the carriage fits perfectly in the basket. Last up, before I can get this filter in the tank, I have to cut the fleece roll to size. So ultimately the roll that I have is too wide, so it's got to fit these little tubes. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure it, and I'm going to use probably the worst tool possible, the uh, chop saw, to go ahead and cut this thing. Don't try this at home. All joking aside, I was super careful as I knew that this fleece could catch in the chop saw. So I was not gonna allow my thumbs to come anywhere near that. With this all done and this thing chopped to size, now I've gotta go ahead and roll this fleece onto these hubs. And out of anything in this project, this was probably the most annoying part because it took forever and I know that there's a ton of better ways I could have done this. Finally, oh, now I gotta go ahead and get this last hub onto the end of this mat and this thing is going to be ready to go in the tank. All right, it is all together and it is ready. I cannot wait to get this thing in the tank. Although it's gonna be some time before I know if it's working well. Once again, it fits well into the basket. So here we go. To start, I have to remove the old media basket then I'm gonna insert the roller mat basket. This one pushes all the way in and it doesn't sit on anything on the outside of the glass. It actually sits directly on top of that little spacer divider that's in the bottom here. I don't know if you can see it. Nope, not really, down there. The roller mat guide carriage right here, this is just gonna actually plug right into the top of the basket. Super simple. Plug it in. And I'm done. It is installed. It was that easy. 
and it's looking really good. It actually looks like it's functioning really well, but only time will tell. And luckily, I actually filmed this several weeks ago. So let's check out how it's working. Three weeks later. Here is the fluval and here is the roller mat. It's been a few weeks. I've only had to roll it, I don't know, maybe two or three times. And overall, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to and it's doing it fantastically. If you can see the fleece roller filter paper, it is nice and green. You know, it's definitely picking some particulates out of the tank so they can't break down in the water column and ultimately become bad nutrients for the tank, you know, phosphates, nitrates. I think it's perfect timing to go ahead and roll this mat up again here. So check it out. You can see how dirty this filter paper is. I possibly could have waited longer. I think it's only been about two or three days since I last rolled it. But yeah, look at it. I mean, compared to the clean filter paper above, white versus a nice dark greenish brown. It's hard to tell at this moment, but this might be the best filtration upgrade you can do for an all-in-one tank. I know people love these for your larger tanks. Once again, getting out those particulates. And the roller mat tends to fight with the protein skimmers. I know BRS TV, they posted a video explaining this. If you have a roller mat, it's pulling out the particulates. They don't break down in the water column. Therefore, you will get less skim mate. So in a smaller tank like this, you likely do not need both, either a roller mat or a protein skimmer. And protein skimmers have their own set of issues. Ultimately, you need another pump to run them. Sometimes if they're not set correctly, they can skim too much or skim too little. And they also are a struggle to fit into these smaller tanks. So my go-to from now on is going to be a roller mat in all-in-one tanks. And no more protein skimmers, although I'm not currently running any protein skimmers in my all-in-ones at this point. So that is a wrap for this project, and overall, I could not be happier. For anybody that stayed this long, I'm sure you're wondering where you can get one of these for yourself. Now, I am going to make this prototype available for purchase on iclive.com. Once again, this is a prototype that I am constantly updating, so it will look a little bit different than the one that you're currently seeing in this video. I also can provide the files to anyone that can actually create or print this themselves. However, this one's a bit more complicated. It takes some assembly. You've got to have multiple different types of parts. So it's not as simple as just clicking print like some of the pump guards that I've created in the past. So that is a wrap on this video. If you like what I'm doing here, please don't forget to like and subscribe as I have a lot more really cool projects coming up in the near future, including roller mats for a host of different all-in-one tanks. Next up is the Waterbox Peninsula Mini 15 gallon, which I have upstairs. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you live in the next video.